Hello and welcome. My name is John Hobby and welcome to the Great Poker Chip Adventure Series 2. This is the second season. Oh my goodness, I guess I missed something. I am back for more. And we are shuffling. All my subscribers know exactly what's going on. They have their decks ready. All right, grab the top two cards off of your deck at home and we are going to play Texas Hold'em here. It doesn't matter. I mean, the, we're not going to bet or anything, so it doesn't matter if it's like no limit or whatever. So <laughs> here's the flop. Oh dear, look at that. Somebody sitting on quads. Is that focusing? Let's make sure that we get that focus there. All right. Turn, river, beautiful. All right, well, let us know what you have. Here, I'll draw, I'll draw, these are my two cards, okay? Ooh, I got a pair of queens. All right, let's see here. Guess what we're talking about today? If you said the Majestics, you are correct. Now, <laughs> I have some, uh, I, my opinions about these have changed. Is it for better or for worse? Well, we're about to find out, let's dive in. We have, you know, I, like I said earlier, just um, by way of introduction, I purchased these from Apache Poker Chips. I ordered a sample set of 100, and I'm gonna pull that one aside for a second. We'll talk about that in a minute. And there, I ordered a set of 100. I paid $40 for that set, this set that you're looking at right here. <laughs> and we actually have played these. We've flexed these into some games. We've played them alongside some other chips, and I've played heads up with these just for fun. So I have some new thoughts about the whole thing. But as usual, we're going to talk about quality control first, okay? So, you know, let's talk about flatness first because we know we have some pretty stacks here. Let's just, you know, grab a stack of these and let's see how flat these are, okay? Is this gonna focus on the little stack I'm holding here? Hopefully it will. I'm not sure if you're seeing those gaps open up, but there are definitely gaps opening up here. This is not a perfectly flat set. So, you know, so far that's exactly average for China Clay, okay? That's, that just comes with the territory. You know, working with factories in China, which is, is what happened here with Apache Poker Chips. They they worked, you know, with the factory. And my understanding is they had a little help from some other people who are familiar with the factories in China, and <laughs> but got that sorted out, designed these and had and ordered these, and these are coming in through Apache Poker Chips, okay? Now, uh, the other thing that we talk about when we talk about quality control is the weight, width, and thickness. And I'm gonna throw the numbers up on the screen. They're not, perfect, but they're very, very similar to other China clays. Uh, the biggest concern is the thickness, and I would say that these are ever so slightly better than the Milano's or some other uh, some other China clays that I've personally handled. So, you know, you know, still very average here. And finally, <laughs> the stickers. All right. Now, they're inlays, okay? I call them inlays. Be consistent here. The inlay right here. Now, there's going to be some new people that roll in who aren't that familiar with poker chips, and there will be experts who roll in who know way more than I do. I'm just some guy who's looking for poker chips, okay? So read the comments and leave a comment if you have a question, but I'm gonna explain real quick for those of you that are new about the inlay discussion, okay? Well, how is a sticker not an inlay? It's recessed into that chip. Isn't that in the chip? Well, uh, for a lot of the premium chips, that's kind of not good enough, okay? So like, for example, let's grab a, a top hat and cane here. These are made by Paulson, okay? This is not a sticker. You cannot peel this out. So when the chip is still hot, they stamp this inlay into it, hot, and then the whole thing cures, dries together, and so this kind of becomes integral to it. So it's like, you know, scraping off a part of the chip. It's like this pink portion right here, right? Not exactly the same because it's a different material, but it's like scraping that out, okay? Can you do it? Yeah, you can, but you've ruined the chip, okay? Same with this. You can't peel this out and stick it back on, okay? With these, not so much. <laughs> you can peel these off and kind of stick them back on. I think, uh, if, I think I was looking, if I was looking correctly, you can actually get blanks and you can order your own labels, which is amazing, which is a wonderful option. Thank you for doing that. That gives a great little customizability to your sets. Very well thought out. Uh, just as another example, let's throw in a Bellagio chip here. 
Okay, this is the same thing when you're talking about inlays. Uh, you're talking about, let's see if we can again get this to focus. It likes to go slow. So this again, you know, you can see is not a sticker. It doesn't come out. You can't peel this out. This is also made by Paulson. Very simple, elegant design here. Now, uh, the other things, you know, we're looking for consistency. I, <laughs> I'm not going to go through all the little things that we can look for for consistency in a set. Like, for example, you know, are all the fonts the same? Are all the inlay, you know, is all the inlay printing the same? Are all the stamps, like you'll notice there's stamping here. Is all the stamping, the crown, the diamond crown, alternating stamp pattern on these chips? are those all to the same depth okay there's lots of little things that you can look for when you're talking about quality control i'm not going to dive into all of that needless to say it is very satisfactory and i'm going to say very average if not slightly above average when it comes to all of that i love this inner circle right here that's stamped into it as well elegant elegant design well thought out so <laughs> quality control you know, average, if not slightly above average, but I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna say average because it fits in that china clay mold, all right? Now, now we're getting to the interesting part of it. Design, okay, looking at these, do these appeal to you? A lot of you will be like, yeah, all right, awesome, these rock. Um, and some of you will just be like, eh, I'm not really sure. Now, see, I have a problem because I have so many, so many chips uh, that I've sorted through, that I've looked at. I develop my own opinion, okay? So we understand what I'm saying here is my own opinion. <laughs> and that's one of the great things about design is you can develop your own opinion. You don't need me to tell you that you like something, all right? So for me, when I first saw these, I went down this logical checklist in my mind, having, you know, owning, you know, thousands and thousands of poker chips. I'm just like, ah, okay, there's no edge spot progression. So all the edge spots are the same. I call it, <laughs> I know this is not what it's called, but I call it, I call it the, the pyramid crosshairs, okay? Because, you know, everything, you know, pointing to the center, which is a good radial design from a design standpoint because you want to um, point the focus of people's attention to the center, okay? So that's good. The pyramid design is good. And these little crosshair ticks are good too, okay? So it, it's like being having something in your crosshairs. It's just what I call it. It's not going to stick. But the pyramid crosshair pattern is something that I really like. It's, uh, to me, more unique than like an 8V pattern or like the Milano like a trapezoidal inlay pattern right here on their edge spots. And the other thing I like compared to, the, speaking of the Milanos, I like how the majestic colors are more bold than the Milanos. All right. Uh, let's grab a green here as well. Okay. So the Milanos are on the right and the Majestics are on the left. And you can see, and you know, it seems like they're slightly more bold than the Milanos, but, and this never shows up well on my camera. It doesn't matter what kind of camera I have, it just never really shows up properly. But the fluorescent colors on these Paulsons are stunning. Okay, this is discontinued. Uh, I even forget what this set's called, the classic, Paulson Classic or something, I don't remember. Um, and you know, you compare that to the green of the Majestics, and the, <laughs> the Paulson might be a little bit more bold. And the, yeah, and we're not gonna compare them to Paulson's directly, but you know, so, you know, as far as colorations and design go, you know, I, you know, the Majestics have, here it comes, this is what changed, have grown on me. What? In your first impressions video, you said that uh, you didn't really like them. Yeah, because once I finished that logical checklist, I was like, ah, yeah, you know, well, the pharaohs and all these other chips, you know, have these progressions. Here's some pharaohs just throwing these in, you know. The pharaohs had pr progressive edge spots and, you know, artwork that, you know, progressive artwork kind of like some of my favorite chips, the Paulson Top Hat and Cane. You can see some of the progressions right here edge spots, inlays, lovely, lovely design. Again, sadly discontinued. So <laughs> after that checklist, of course, you know, I'm gonna say, yeah, well, it doesn't have all the design features I'm looking for. Okay, and then we went out and we played with them. We put these on the table with the pharaohs, okay? And so we're playing with uh, three of us and everybody there, including myself, was just, I constantly just like, oh gosh, I really like these Majestics, you know? It's like, 
you know, and it, it got to a point where it was like it tells, you know, because somebody was bluffing. What are they going to bluff with? Oh, the pharaohs, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, you hate those pharaohs. You like these way more. So I'm calling your bluff. I re-raid, you know, and then, you know, it, it, and the, at that point, we're like, ah, all right, now we need to play with one set of chips. Played heads up with these before. And we also played these with the Tiki Kings, uh, ceramics, just to completely mix things up and just to compare which one we like more, you know, ceramics or China clays. Anyway, well, that's a different story. So these, I came out of that experience, those many experiences with fond memories of these Majestics. They really hit the spot. And it's because of the design, all right? They're bold, which is what I'm looking for. They're, <laughs> they're not intrusive, all right? So everything is easy to read. And from a design standpoint, I need to mention that there is the dollar sign there. So if you're interested in this um, in England or in the Eurozone, you're going to have to order some custom custom labels for this. But uh, yeah, and so anyway, from, you know, they're not distracting. So the art here isn't so hard to read that you have to pull it up really close to your face just to see something and be like, oh, I get it. That's a, you know, what, like, what do they have on the pharaohs? Oh, what is that? Is that the, is that the sun or is it? Oh, no, it looks like the setting sun, you know? <laughs> not that I'm, not that I'm ripping on pharaohs. I actually really like the pharaoh set, but, you know, <laughs> there's nothing, what I'm saying is there's nothing distracting or detracting from this design, which is hard to do in today's world because you can, you can get poker chips that are so busy that it, you know, kind of can take away from the poker chip experience of, I just want these, I want these chips to be chips. I want them to be simple. That's it. They have that appeal to everybody. Does that make sense? It's, it's kind of hard to explain the, the design aspects of these. Magic. I love, I love this set, all right, as far as design goes. Uh, as quality control, to me, it's still a very China clay. And yes, it did come with that unique China clay factory smell. And I have cleaned most of these off since I have purchased them. And so, you know, to conclude the design thing, I'm going to rate them above average. And that's a personal thing. But for me, despite my first impressions, <laughs> these are, these are, I would say, uh, out of the currently produced sets, I like them more than the Milano. I like them more than the Pharaohs. I like them more than some other China clays that are available. Um, I would say these are my number one China clay. Uh, is that true? My number one China clay that's in production right now. Yes, number one. And it's the number three current production ship. It loses out to the Tiki Kings. Man, this is still... A lovely, lovely set. And the other set has left my mind. I can't remember what else I thought. All right, I'm going to change right here on the video until I can think of it. This is my number two favorite set of all time behind the Tiki Ceramics. All right, so now we're moving to materials, okay? I already talked about the smell, their China clays. Uh, questions? Materials are very average. They, they didn't they didn't work any wonders with the materials. They're still very consistent. Now durability. Okay, that's what, remember this chip that I I hid down here. Yeah, this is the one that I broke on camera. Every time I play with chips, I always try to break things on camera. I record I can. yes, my sessions I just in case I break right, one. There we go. And I grabbed this one, cranked on it with my fingers, and sure enough, it broke. So you can see. You know, clearly these are stickers. You can clearly peel them off. They are a plastic material. So they are more durable than paper. So they come off whole. So I mean, well, mostly whole. So they're not like paper that you didn't, you know, shreds all the time. So you can re reapply them. So they're not, you know, the same style of inlay as a Paulson. They're, they are stickers. So there you go. There you have it. And you can see there's no metal insert. That kind of goes back to materials. It looks like there is a couple, a few air bubbles in this one, but you know, that's kind of irrelevant, but that's in case you're wondering from an engineering standpoint, or a, I should say a manufacturing engineering standpoint, that's why we get the weight variations that we see of those tenths, <laughs> tenths or hundredths of a gram. Either way, uh, that's the durability side of it. Yes, they are very durable. They're as durable as any other China clay. And 
if you really crank on them, if you abuse them, they will break. Like any, like if you shoot them or chop them with a machete, what else have we done on this channel? All sorts of nonsense just to show that, you know, anything abused will, can and will be broken. All right. So, you know, I recommend going out and doing a little bit of research before you run out and buy something, okay? So you may see these and be like, oh, I love them. John loves them too. I want to get them, okay? Well, hold on, hold on. Do you, want to, do you want some custom labels? You know, read a little bit about some other things and some other options. Like, for example, like, you know, ceramics. There are some good ceramics out there. I want to do a little exhibition here for you to kind of give you guys an idea of what's out there uh, in the form of a sound test. Yay, so this is a exhibition of some other chips you may be interested in disguised as a sound test. To me, you know, it's not a big deal, but a lot of people, you know, it is. I understand maybe my ears aren't very sensitive. Other people may have more sensitive ears than I do. Uh, real quick, let's uh, talk about shuffling. Uh, shuffling, I think you've seen me do this in the first impressions, uh, my first impressions video. I'm doing this left-handed because of the position of my camera. My left hand is not near as good as my right hand at shuffling, but it's okay. Either way, these have always shuffled fine for me. They have slightly rounded edges. Not, It doesn't seem quite to the same bevel edge that the uh, Milanos have, but it might just be my imagination. Let's have a look. Then we can compare the two sets right here in ultra high definition. How do those edges look for you? Man, it's my table not flat here. I'm looking through the viewfinder when I probably should be looking at them in real life. Let me, yeah, I would say they're very similar. Yeah, those look similar to me. <laughs> All right, I'll have to look over, I'll have to review it in video to make sure, but they look similar to me. Either way, they have rounded edges. They're not sharp like if you're familiar with Paulson's or ASM's or something. So on that note, we're going to move some other chips in here and continue on with this sound test, all right? Let's, and you guys know how this works. I'm going to sound test the chips, and then I'm going to sound test the um, other chips I'm rolling in and then back to the Majestics. So you'll get a wealth of sound and um, visuals here. So let's start with some of the lower end stuff. Um, here's here are some Monte Carlos. I think they still make these coin, um, not coin, metal insert chips. Here's some other next gens. These are some of my favorite inexpensive chips. No metal inserts in these. Uh, pretty lightweight, but they still have an okay feel to them. Let's see what else would I put in that same category. Ah, here we go. Here's something that will sound different. Some coin inlay chips. Wow, there's a huge glare off of those. Either way, they're coin inlay chips. <laughs> and so you can look at these, see if any of those jump out at you. Uh, I have reviews on, I think, all of these. I would not consider, yeah, right, looking for something else. And I think that might be it. Wait, no, hey, look at this. The bicycle. <laughs> I think these are metal insert chips as well. Uh, 11 and a half gram. Uh, they're, they're way better than these old. Do you remember these? Classic, plastic, non-weighted, just interlocking chips. Oh dear, those were, those were terrible. But still fond memories, right? So no, not all bad. All right, so these are great. The only problem with these is there's no denominations on them. Get your Sharpie out and start writing on them. I'm kidding, you might not want to do that. But there's always that guy at the poker table who's like, so what's... What's the red worth again? Five minutes later, he has a drink and he's like, hey, the reds, those are 12? No, ah, gosh, just I mean, get some get some chips with denominations. All right, sorry. Yeah, I like these way better than the, the old interlocking ones. Okay, here we go, sound test. very different aristocratic thwump, right? Okay, <laughs> so let's just uh, go with some competition here. So let's grab some Pharaohs, some Milanos. Uh, I already have some Milanos. I grabbed another stack of these fives, but we're not going to. Uh, maybe we'll do the fives instead of the 25s. And let me think, what else do I have here? 
I had another set of china clays. I could have swore. Uh, maybe not. All right. Well, these are kind of the competition here. So we're going to try these out real quick. My guess is that they're going to sound like china clays. All right. There you have it. Pharaohs, Milanos. Let's roll in some high end. When I say high end, I mean expensive chips. Uh, top hat and cane. Do we want two sets of Paulsons? No, we don't because they're no longer manufactured. So what's the point? And let's roll in some casino chips. Just a, a smorgasbord of Paulson casino chips. We have Aria, Planet Hollywood, Win. All right, let's see how these all sound. These are the, the Key West from Classic Poker Chips, formerly ASM. I think I might be getting that wrong. <laughs> correct me Correct me in the comments, I'm always wrong. Anyway, that's some, uh, and let's compare. These are, we're gonna compare apples to oranges now. We're gonna get some ceramics in here. Here are some Crown Laurel ceramics. Ceramics don't have an inlay. They are dyed or printed chips as whatever terminology you wanna use. Tiki King, some of our, my favorite. Tiki King, um, they're also called Tiki Club. I've heard, I've seen, I've heard people call them various other things, but they have these awesome tiki heads on them. And the Venerati set, which I'm, the more I look at these, the less fond I am of those. Just my personal opinion. Again, it comes back to design. It doesn't have anything to do with the durability or usefulness of the chip. And Nevada Jack, this is some lovely artwork. I still love this artwork. Every time I look at these, I'm like, oh, I should get a set of these, but something always comes up. You know, somebody's always releasing a new set or something. So, uh, <laughs> gosh, lovely. All right, so here we go. They're going to sound very different, obviously. The ceramics will sound brighter. There you have it. Tell me what you think in the comments. I, you know, I had a change of heart. I, I don't know if somebody who's owned these for a while or has a complete set will have a change of heart. I'm seriously gonna order some plaques. I'm gonna order more of these. This is on my to order list along with whole bunches of other things, but you will most likely see these on a poker table near John Hobby soon <laughs> i don't know if that's a fair way to say it absolutely lovely lovely chips a great job apache poker chip we i mean i'm really glad somebody took the initiative because there really was we really were wanting some more variety in the china clay market and this really hit the spot this is exactly what i needed to kick off the new year so <laughs> i know i know they came out in 2015 but i hope everybody enjoyed the video thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe i look forward to reading your comments the poker community is very mature i'm very happy to be a part of it